All right, we're going to switch gears this morning a little bit because Brother Charles isn't here to start off with a new book. So we're going to do that next week. At least that's the plan right now. Today we're going to look at a subject that uh, I think all of us are familiar with, and that is prayer. I ask myself, how important do you think prayer is, Marvin? On a scale of 1 to 10, what would I say? What would you say? 1 to 10. I think we'd all say 10, wouldn't we? So we that have that in our mind, 10 is very important. Now let's place ourselves in that number. Where do we stand? Where do I stand? Four, five, six, one, ten? We can all in our own mind paint a picture of where we stand. I guess the most important thing, I believe the most important thing is to ask God. God, where do you think I stand? Where do you know I stand? Are you sure? Oh. It could be a little higher, couldn't it? Maybe one or two more notches? Is that what you really believe? Know that our prayer life is like? So anyway, the bottom line is, are we satisfied? Am I satisfied with my prayer life? That's a question that we all have to answer. Do we struggle? with our prayer time. Do we have a part set a time? Oh, do we have a time set apart in the morning to pray? What do we pray about? Do we ask God for direction? Do we ask for His will? Do we praise Him for who He is? What do we pray about? Is it a two-minute prayer, a one-minute prayer, 30-second prayer? It don't have to be long, but where does it come from? Does it come from our heart or from our mind? No. Here's the potatoes and here's the meat. Thank you, God. Now let's eat. I don't get very far, does it? Do we think about prayer? During the day, when something comes up, we need to make a decision. What's our first thought? Is it about prayer? We need to ask God what I should do or what I shouldn't do. Or do we try and, in our own mind, come up with an answer of what God wants us to do? No, not what God wants us to do, but what I want to do. What do we do? Why don't we do the things that we know are important? We put them off. Do we not? I do. I don't know if you do or not. We know things are important. We need to do them. But we put them off for one reason or another. And it's a reason. It's an excuse is what it is, isn't it? I think prayer could be on the top of that list. So... Do we consider ourselves prayer warriors or do we consider ourselves defeated by prayer, the lack of prayer? So what's our really true heart's desire in relationship to prayer? How important is it? How should we come to God in prayer? The Bible tells us how we should come. Hebrews 4.16, Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace in the time of need. Our prayers should come from our heart. For ourselves, 
for the needs of others. That's why we have prayer requests for the needs of others, right? Did Jesus pray for the needs of others? Yes. Did he pray for himself? Yes. Jesus is our pattern. But again, where do we stand as far as importance in our mind as far as prayer is concerned? Now, consider the privilege, number one. Consider the privilege of prayer. We can approach God when? Anytime, anywhere, for any reason, whatever it is, whether it's a serious, whether it's about a serious operation, or whether it's about a parking spot, doesn't make any difference. We can approach him for whatever is on our hearts and on our minds. If you want to go to the dentist, you need an appointment. If you want to go to the doctor, you need an appointment. You go in the grocery store, you wait in line, usually, to check out. And all those things cost us something, do they not? How much does prayer cost? How long do we have to wait? We don't, it's instant, as soon as we start talking. And we don't have to pay for it, it's free. But there was a price paid for that, was there not? A very healthy price. He understands us. He knows us. We don't have to introduce ourselves. This is Marvin, and I'm going to pray Marvin. Yeah, I live here in Buchanan, you know, 925 North Detroit Street. You remember me? My dad was Conrad. His dad was Elder. We don't have to do that, do we? He knows who we are. He understands who we are. So what do we do with the privilege that we have? Do we use it? Do we use it to the fullest extent? I don't. I don't know about you, but I know I don't. So consider the privilege. Number two, how not to pray. God tells us not only how to pray, but how not to pray. Matthew 6, 5 says, When thou prayest, thou shalt not be as the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogue, the corners of the streets, that they may be seen of men. They have their reward. But when ye pray, use not then repetitions for the heathen do, for they think they shall be heard for their much speaking. So again, do our prayers come from our heart or from our mind? Boy, I hope the pastor asked me to pray this morning so I can show everybody how eloquent my prayers are, how wonderful they are, and just how Oh, just what a great prayer. Bring tears to your eyes. I have my reward, right? They go about as high as a ceiling. And that's it. It's like the Pharisees. Oh, what a wonderful prayer. I'll get complimented by everybody. No. No. Examples of being God being the object of what we do, not only prayers, but what is the object. Matthew 6, 4, that thine alms may be in secret, and thy Father which seeth in secret himself, himself shall reward thee openly. When we give, it's to God in secret. Matthew 6, 17, But thou, when thou fastest, anoint thy head, and wash thy face, that thou appear not unto men, but unto the Father which is in the secret, 
and thy Father which is in secret shall reward thee openly. So we have a privilege of prayer. We have how not to pray. Three, don't give up. I've been, I have a sister that's uh, not saved. She's in her 60s and not saved. She got, she was in South Dakota and she got tied up with this Indian stuff. And everything is nature and uh, anyway, she's all messed up. And we pray for her every day for her salvation. But, uh, you know, don't give up, don't give up. Turn to Luke chapter 18. Luke chapter 18. Let's look at verses 1 through 8. And this is concerning prayer. Luke chapter 18, verses 1 through 8. And he spoke a parable unto them to this end that men always ought to, ought always to pray and not to faint, saying, There was in a city a judge who feared not God, neither regarded men. And there was a widow in the city, and she came to him, saying, Avenge me of my adversary. And he would not for a while, but afterwards he said within himself, Though I fear not God, nor regard man, yet because this widow troubleth me, I will avenge her, lest by her continually coming she weary me. And the Lord said, Hear what the unjust judge saith. And shall not God avenge his own elect, which cry day and night unto him, though he bear long with them? I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he not find faith on the earth. Don't give up. The children of Israel, when they were in bondage, they prayed that God heard them. And God took care of them. Turn to Luke chapter 11. Luke chapter 11, starting with verse 5. And he said unto them, Which of you have a friend shall go up at the helm at midnight and say unto him, Friend, lend me three loaves, for a friend of mine and the journey has come to me, and I have nothing to set before him. And he from within shall answer and say, Trouble me not. The door is now shut, and my children are with me in bed. I cannot rise and give thee. I say unto you, though he will not rise and give him, because he is his friend, yet because of his importunity, he will rise and giveth him as he needeth. And I say unto you, Ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. For every one that asketh receiveth. And he that seeketh findeth, and to him that knocketh it shall be opened. If a son shall ask peace of a son shall ask bread of any of you that is a father, will he give him a stone? Or if he ask a fish, will he give him for a fish give him a serpent? So don't give up. First Thessalonians 5 17 says, Pray without ceasing. Without interruption, always have an attitude of prayer. I mentioned before that, you know, when something comes up on our mind that we need to make a decision. Do we think about praying? Do we think about praying to God? Say, what should I do? You know. Romans 12, 12. Rejoice in hope, patient in tribulation, continuing instant in prayer, instant in prayer, continually be diligent. 
Ephesians 6, 18, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. Do you ever have a burden so great you don't know how to pray for it? It just wells up inside you. You don't know how to pray. God says the Holy Spirit will pray for us. The Holy Spirit will help us to pray. Ask the Holy Spirit to help you. You don't know what to say. Romans 8, 26. Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray for, we are. But the Spirit itself make intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. I have a problem sometimes praying for our country, knowing the shape it's in, knowing what I would like to see, but what's God's plan? What's God trying to teach us? Is he trying to teach us something? I don't know. Verse 27 of Romans 8 says, And he that searches the heart knoweth what the mind of the Spirit, because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. So pray. We need to pray under the influence and assistance of the Holy Spirit. He greatly assists us and helps us in our prayer. So we looked at the privilege of prayer, how not to pray. Don't give up. Number four, expect results. James 5, 16 says, Confess your faults one to another and pray one for another that ye may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. That's why we pray for people. To expect results. James 5.17 says, Elias was a, Elijah was a man subject to like passions as we are. In other words, he's just like we are. No different. And he prayed earnestly that it might not rain, and it rained not on the earth for the space of three years and six months. And he prayed again, and the heavens gave rain, and the earth brought forth her fruit. First Kings 18.37, Elijah again says, Hear me, O Lord, hear me, that this people may know that thou art Lord God, and thou hast turned their hearts back again. It wasn't a very long prayer, was it? God knew what was going on. Verse 38, 1 Kings 18, Then the fire of the Lord fell and consumed the burnt sacrifice and the wood and the stones and the dust and licked up the water that was in the trench. We have to remember That the people that we study about and read about, we just got through the series on David. David was a man after God's own heart, was he not? David made a lot of good decisions, but David made a lot of mistakes. But David had quite a prayer life. We read in the Psalms how David prayed. You know, but he was a man. He was a man. He had his faults. No different than us. The same way. Just some examples of prayer without faith. Acts 12, 4. And when he, this is King Herod, had apprehended him, this is Peter, and put him in prison and delivered him to four quadrants of soldiers to keep him. 
And then the next verse, Peter therefore was kept in prison. What? Prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him. So here was Peter in prison, and the church was praying without ceasing unto God for him. What do you suppose they were praying for? What do you think they were praying for? Well, God prayed that he would get real good meals, that he would keep warm. What do you think he was praying for? Turn to Acts chapter 12. Acts chapter 12, and let's start with verse 11. We know what happened. An angel came and loosened Peter, and he didn't know whether he was dreaming or what was happening. But anyway, verse 11, we'll start with, And when Peter was come to himself, he said, Now I know surely that the Lord has sent his angel and has delivered me out of the hand of Herod and for all the expectation of the people of the Jews. And when he had considered this thing, he came to the house of Mary, the mother of John, whose surname was Mark, where they were gathered together praying. Okay? And Peter knocked on the door of the gate, and a damsel came and hearkened, to hearken, named Rhoda. And when she knew Peter's voice, she opened not the gate for gladness, but ran in and told how Peter stood before the gate. And they said unto her, Thou art mad. <laughs> How's that for faith and prayer? They pray for Peter. I would think they would pray that he'd be released. He gets released, beaten on the door, and Rhoda comes and says, Peter's out here. Peter's out here. Oh, you're mad. You're crazy. What's wrong with you? Verse 15. And they said unto her, Thou art mad. But she continually affirmed that it was even so. Then they said, It is his angel. Couldn't be Peter, it's his angel. But the Peter continued knocking and they had opened the door. She saw him, they were astonished. Boy, well, how's that for prayer? Do we do the same thing? Pray and ask God, and then it happens, and then we can't believe it. So anyway. Let's look at how to pray. How do we pray? We look at the privilege, how not to pray, don't give up, expect results, and now how to pray. Matthew 6, 6 says, When thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet, and when thou hast shut the door, pray to the Father which is in secret, and the Father which is in secret shall reward thee openly. We have a prayer closet, we have a place where we pray. James 1 5, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that giveth to all men liberally, and that greateth not, and it shall be given to him. I had mentioned, what do we pray for? We pray in the morning. Do we pray for wisdom? Do we pray for direction? Doesn't it say here, if you lack wisdom, you don't know what to do, you want to know what to do, if you want direction from God, ask Him, right? <laughs> ask Him. Will He give it to us? 
what he says. Do we believe that? Do we believe that? James 1, 6, but let him ask in faith. We got to have faith in what God will answer us, but it's according to his will. We've heard it before. Sometimes he says no, sometimes he says wait. That's the hard part, isn't it? Wait, because we want it now. <laughs> we want an answer now. You drive up to drive in and you want your hamburger now. You don't want it in 40 minutes. You want it now. And we want an answer from God now. That seems to be our society, right? Faster and faster. You've got a computer that's 10 years old, it's so slow it's not funny. You want it faster. Everything faster. Let him ask in faith, nothing wavering, for he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. Let not that man think he shall receive anything. Psalm 145, 18 says, The Lord is nigh unto all them, to all that call upon him, to all that call upon him in truth. In truth. Sincerely with an upright heart, trusting in Him, waiting on Him for His answer. How to pray. Privilege of prayer, how not to pray, don't give up, expect results, how to pray. Then we have hindrances to prayer. Are there any hindrances? Psalm 66, 18, if I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. Proverbs 15, 29, the, far, the Lord is far from the wicked, but he hears the pride, prayers of the righteousness. James 4, 3, he asks, and ye receive not, because ye ask amiss, that ye may consume it upon your lusts. What do we pray for? We pray for worldly prosperity, success. We need to examine our motives. When Solomon prayed, when he became king, what did he ask for? He asked for wisdom, did he not? Wisdom to rule this great people. God gave him wisdom. God gave him wisdom, but on top of that, he gave him riches untold. He became the richest man. And he became the wisest man. But he had his priorities straight. And God helped him. Again, what are our priorities? John 9, 31 says, Now we know that God heareth not sinners, but if a man be a worshiper of God and doeth his will, him he heareth. Some things we pray for, expecting the results, I believe, at least for me. And I know it's not what God wants. You ever do that? I know God doesn't want that. But inside, I want it so bad that I pray for it anyway. problem with that is God might say, okay, you can have it. And what happens? I suffer for it. I suffer for it. 
We want a king. Just like all the other nations. God, give us a king. No, you don't want a king. This is what's going to happen. I don't care. I don't want a king. We want a king. God says, okay, you got a king. And they got what came with it, didn't they? So we've got to be careful. James 4, 17, To him that knoweth the good, and knoweth it not, to him it is sin. So unconfessed sin, deliberate sin in our lives, brings prayer that will not be answered or not heard. God answers those prayers that are sincere from our heart. So anyway, what's our prayer life like? What's my prayer life like? Each of us have to answer that question. Search our hearts. What's it really like? Where the rubber meets the road, is God satisfying? Let's look for just a few minutes here at the Lord's Prayer. It's really the disciples' prayer. The Lord's Prayer. Luke 11 says it came to pass that as he was praying at a certain place, when he sees one of the disciples said unto him, Lord, teach us to pray. Teach us to pray. Turn to Matthew chapter 6. <clears throat> Starting with verse 9. Matthew chapter 6, starting with verse 9. After this manner, therefore pray, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, as it is in heaven, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. So our Father says, our Father. If a father, if let's say a family has three children or four children, and they say, this is our father. I have four children. And I'm the father. And they say, that's my father. Collectively, yes. But individually also. Right? Each one individually. It's the same way of thoughts. My father. My father in heaven. He has adopted me. I'm his. So it's a close relationship between father and son or daughter and father or father children are to respect their father are they not well we see lost a lot of that this day and age there's no respect for father or mother the child runs the home the mother don't run the home, or the father don't run the home. It's the mother. Christ said, Abba, Father, when he prayed, Mark 14, 36, Father, all things are possible for thee. Take this cup from me. Nevertheless, not what I will, but thou will. Abba, Father. That was a term used by Jewish, Jewish children addressing their father, Abba. It's like our 
today we say Papa or Daddy. It's a close relationship. Romans 8, 15 says, For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we pray, cry, Abba, Father. So it's a close relationship. Considering prayer, we, we have a close relationship with God. We can come to Him. Just think of it as you can go to your dad or your mom. They should be able to come to us. Our Father, our Heavenly Father loves us more than we can imagine. His, his love is, you can't describe it, can you? His love for us. He's a creator of all things when we think about it, the sustainer of all things. Will he take care of us? Will he take care of our needs? He tells us he takes care of the sparrows, what their needs are. Aren't we much better than them? How do we treat that relationship? You know, he speaks to us mainly through his word, does he not? We read his word, he speaks to us, but how much do we speak to him? as a father, as an individual to a father. I don't know. Our Father which art in heaven. What does it say next? Hallowed be thy name. Hallowed, do we respect his name? And then we can ask him, what? Verse 11, give us this day our daily bread. Provide our needs for this day. Not our wants. Keep us from those things we don't need. If we don't need it, keep it from me. Give us those things that we do need. And then lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. We are our own worst enemy, are we not? Our desires, what we want, that's our priorities normally, not what God wants, but what we want. And our Heavenly Father is looking down and saying, I know what you need. I know what's good for you. I know what you want, but you don't need that. <laughs> but do we have that relationship with Him that we talk to Him? And have the openness of our, not only our mind, but our heart to accept, know, to accept, wait. If we don't pray and ask about something, how do we know what the answer is? We don't. Again, that relationship that we need to have with our Father in heaven. Scale of one to ten, where are we? Each one of us has to answer that. How much during the day do we seek out and ask God for wisdom and direction? Again, that's each one has to answer for herself. <coughs> Any thoughts, any comments? Next week, Brother Charles should be back and we'll go into the book.
that was handed out last week. Okay, Brother Bob, would you close in prayer, please?